We are with Greg Lane. He is a uh, faculty member of the Lean Enterprise Institute and the author of a number of books, most recently, Culturally on Plan, A Practical Guide to Aligning Culture and Strategy. Uh, Greg, you just finished a workshop on uh, applying lean principles to uh, uh, high mix, uh, low volume companies. And you noted that uh, such companies build a wide range of products and this creates more room for uh, errors uh, when calculating profit margins. How can lean management help? Well, the, the problem in the, in the last 40 years or so, in general in manufacturing, is our, our portion of cost in our indirect area and our overhead burden has gone up quite a bit. Our direct labor has gone down, obviously, as we've automated processes and so forth. And especially high mix, low volume, we have a, a higher burden in our indirect and overhead processes. And the way that's allocated into our costs sometimes is not very accurate. So if, I, if we just look at a picture in kind of a high mix, low volume, and if we assume this is 100% of our sales price broken down, and again, direct materials will differ quite a bit on, on businesses, could get upwards of 50 or 60% uh, of your sales price as your cost of materials, direct labor, a lot of high mix, low volume is somewhere between 7 and 20% of that cost now, so that's gone down quite a bit. But when we look at the direct labor, direct materials, really 75% of that cost is, is fixed in the design. And where we need to focus in this high mix, low volume is in this area, this indirect cost, okay? And this can be our indirect our, in our office, engineering, planning, product development, our sales and marketing, but this cost can be 25, 30, 35%. And the way we allocate that into the sales price of the products I'll, often is by direct labor hours. And our problem in high mix, low volume is the direct labor hours are skewed. The products we build the most of consume the most direct labor hours, but they consume the least from our indirect problem, our indirect people. Where we consume more cost with our indirects is in our one-offs, our stranger parts. But they consume fewer direct labor hours, so they get allocated less of these costs. So we can turn to solutions in lean accounting, like activity-based costing. So remember the picture. We have a high portion of the cost where we can do some supply chain activity here. We can obviously do lean activities, productivity improvements here, but a lot of that cost is fixed on our design, generally 75%. Our fixed costs themselves are fixed by country and in terms of our tax, our benefits, our legal, we don't, generally don't affect there. So this is the area we play in and we need to make sure we're using activity-based costing. Greg, another point that you uh, made is that you, you stress the importance for a high mix company to uh, understand uh, indirect costs and you suggest starting by examining one product. What criteria should a high mix manager use to select that product to examine? So I think that the question becomes is how serious of a problem could these inappropriate allocations be? And how much, how well do I understand profit margin per product or how much error is in there? So a suggestion can be to choose a part that would tend to have incorrectly allocated margins from some of these indirect functions. And those products would tend to include something that has a lot of firefighting tends to have a high inventory being held to manage it, or a large bill of material, because that consumes a lot of purchasing time, shipping time, unpackaging time, receiving time. Long setups would be another inkling of a product that would be worth tracking through your system and understanding the real cost versus the allocated cost. A couple others would be pro uh, products that uh, incur a lot of quality problems, or a, a final criteria might be frequent engineering changes. But you're gonna, you, you want to get yourself convinced, follow a difficult product through, and try to really associate the true cost, what that absorbed from our indirect support functions, versus what the accountants allocate to that. Greg, finally, uh, you've made a, uh, a study, or in fact you've been a student, of why lean transformations fail. What have you learned? Well, uh, spending a lot of years out working in companies, uh, I've seen a lot of, of uh, lean work not sustained after a number of years. Maybe in the beginning it's sustained, it's not sustained. So I've 
studied the problem further, and, and I've looked at a lot of surveys that are taken. A uh, recent survey in the U.S. showed the CEOs themselves, two-thirds of those CEOs said that transformations have failed to sustain results. Companies like McKinsey and Accenture, the big consulting companies that go out and do surveys, find closer to 90% of business transformations fail to sustain results. My experience has been that has to do with mostly cultural issues. By culture, I mean traits and behaviors. And I think what organizations are very good at is going after the technical solutions, working on improving hard skills. But when it comes to soft skills, we don't have a practical and pragmatic way to challenge that. So I've been doing a lot of work in the recent years to try to overcome that with companies. Um, there are some, as mentioned, some books published out there. I've recently published one as a practical way to go after that. But I think you need a practical method to develop a plan to, to go and improve your soft skills, your traits and behaviors. And that will support the hard skill changes and the tools you're implementing. Because we know the tools approach. We know in the Lean community that a tools approach by itself fails. So you need to kind of get culturally on plan. You need to align your strategy with, with how you're going to improve the soft skills. And there are some ways to do that. Greg Lang, thank you very much for sharing your insights on how to apply lean concepts to high mix, low volume operations. Thank you. Thank you.